Alleluia, Christ is risen. This is the seventh Sunday of Easter, May 24th, 2020. Our opening hymn is our hymn of the month, hymn number 711, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. Please rise. In remembrance of your baptism, you are invited to make the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Take a moment of silence for self-examination according to the Ten Commandments. O Almighty God, merciful Father,
upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O King of glory, Lord of hosts, uplifted in triumph far above all heavens, leave us not without consolation, but send us the Spirit of truth, whom you promised from the Father. For you live and reign with him and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we join in seeing Christ is risen.
psalmody is from Psalm 68, beginning with the first verse. God shall arise, his enemies shall be scattered, and those who hate him shall flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so you shall drive them away. As wax melts before fire, so the wicked shall perish before God. But the righteous shall be glad. They shall exult before God. They shall be jubilant with joy. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Lift up a song to him who rides through the deserts. His name is the Lord. Exult before him. Father of the fatherless and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. God settles the solitary in a home. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity, but the rebellious dwell in a parched land. O God, when you went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked, the heavens poured down rain, before God, the one of Sinai, before God, the God of Israel. Rain in abundance, O God, you shed abroad. You restored your inheritance as it languished. Your flock found a dwelling in it. In your goodness, O God, you provided for the needy. The first reading is from Acts chapter 1, beginning with the 12th verse. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying, Peter and John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon the zealot, and Judas the son of James. All these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers. The company of persons was in all about 120 and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now this man bought a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his bowels gushed out. And it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the field was called in their own language, Akeldama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, May his camp become desolate, and let there be no one to dwell in it, and let another take his office." So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward two, Joseph, called Barsabbas, who was also called Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, Show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 Peter chapters 4 and 5. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or as a meddler. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. For it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God, and if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous is scarcely saved, 
What will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary the devil prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel, preceded by the Alleluia in verse, which we speak together. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all flesh, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth having accomplished the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me. And they they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For I have given them the words that you gave me, And they have received them and have come to know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed and you sent me, that you sent me. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine. And I am glorified in them. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me that they may be one even as we are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Having heard God's word, we join in confessing our common Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we'll join in singing our sermon song, Glorious Day.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In 1939, this famous speech was given by one of the baseball greats before he left the game that he loved. I share with you a portion of that farewell address. Fans, for the past two weeks, you've been reading about the bad break that I got. Yet today I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the whole earth. I have been in ballparks for 17 years and have never received anything but kindness and encouragement from you fans. He then went on to acknowledge his family, his fellow teammates, his coaches, before he closed with these words. So I close in saying that I may have had a tough break, but I have an awful lot to live for. Lou Gehrig died two years later from what is now known as ALS, a nervous system disease that weakens the muscles and impacts physical function. Most of us now know it as Lou Gehrig's disease. I'm left to wonder what went through his mind as he approached that day that he was going to be ending his career. In watching the footage, he was so overcome with emotion that he couldn't even approach the microphone. In fact, it took some encouragement before he actually did go to the microphone to speak to those fans. And it was at that moment that he went out in glory. What does one say when they know that they're going to be leaving? What are the right words to share with those that you care about in a farewell address? I looked up some suggested quotes that one might want to include in a farewell address, and these are a few of those that were shared at that time. Ernie Harwell, famous sports broadcaster for the Detroit Tigers. I say he's famous because, of course, he's connected to the Tigers. But in that... I always listened to Ernie Harwell and was just in awe at a way he had to use words. And I got to go out into the garage, and my dad would always be listening to Ernie Harwell. At nighttime, when I go to my grandmother's house, she would listen to Ernie Harwell call the games for the Tigers as I fell asleep at night. But he said this here. He said, It's time to say goodbye, but I think goodbyes are sad, and I'd much rather say hello. Hello to a new adventure. Elwin Brooks White, author of Stuart Little, Charlotte's Web, and also The Trumpet of the Swan, once said this, You have been my friend, and that in and of itself is a tremendous thing. Theodore Geisel, or better known as Dr. Seuss, once said, Don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. Alan Alexander Milne, author best known for that character we know as Winnie the Pooh, said, How lucky I am to have something that makes saying goodbye so hard. Saying goodbye is hard. Jesus sat there in the upper room and he went on saying farewell to his disciples for four chapters before he came to our text for today. And then when it came to draw things to a close, he spoke words that have now become known as the high priestly prayer. Jesus, our prophet, priest, and king said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. Here Jesus was about ready to go into the Garden of Gethsemane. He was about ready to be betrayed by one of his own followers. He was about ready to be arrested. And yet, before leaving that upper room, 
he gave his disciples one last gift before he was about to go out in glory. Jesus prayed for his disciples. Where so many times he'd just gone off on his own to pray and just be able to have that moment alone, now in this moment there in that upper room, he gives them this beautiful gift and he welcomes them into the conversation that he was having with his dad. Just think about it. How wonderful that would be able to be to listen to the Son of God talk to the Heavenly Father. And then just imagine what it must have been like to listen to those petitions and then realize that as he was praying that high priestly prayer that those petitions were in many ways for them. Jesus was concerned about them, not himself. Here he was about ready to go and die on a cross for the sins of the entire world where anyone else would have their minds all on themselves. He thought about them. He even included those whom the disciples would proclaim the word to and all the generations that would be receiving that word thereafter. That includes you and it includes me. Jesus on the night there that he was betrayed, there in that upper room, he was thinking about us. He prayed for us. In a time where anybody else would have been focused just on themselves, Jesus lays aside his glory and he focuses his attention on those for whom he is about to die. Scripture tells us, greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. His disciples gathered around in that upper room were his friends. You are his friends. I'm his friend. Jesus continued to pray for those he loves. That they would be kept in his word. That they would be glorified. That he would be glorified in them. And that the Father would keep them in his name. And that they would be one. That they would be united. It was his prayer for all of us as he went to manifest his glory for the entire world. But where worldly glory would only draw attention to the self, Jesus did the contrary. He showed us what true glory looks like. It doesn't come in the spotlight shown upon us. It comes in suffering for the sake of others. It comes in sacrifice. Going out in glory for Jesus meant laying aside his crown in heaven so that he could be fitted with a crown of thorns. It meant removing his royal robes that he wore up there in the halls of heaven to be stripped of all of his clothing and spat upon and mocked. It meant forfeiting his throne right next to his heavenly father to instead be fastened with nails on a cross, and be placed next to two criminals. And yet then and there, as he had sacrificed so much, his prayer still remained for us. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He did it all for us. How often do our prayers focus on others and what is best for them? How often do we get caught up in a list of worldly wants and desires and neglect what our neighbor needs? How often are our prayers just downright selfish as we manifest before the Almighty God just how discontent and unsatisfied we are with His provision? We hear a prayer from the lips of Jesus today and we ought to ask ourselves, where is our prayer life at? Are we fervent in prayer and pray without ceasing? Or is prayer for us only like this last lifeline that we only use in desperation? The Catechism teaches us that prayer is speaking to God in words and thoughts. 
And so what's on our minds as we pray? Is it more others? Or is it more about ourselves? From the upper room to the cross, we can be thankful that Jesus' thoughts and prayers were not for himself. What remained upon his heart and mind was doing the will of his Father. What remained upon his heart and mind was doing what was necessary to forgive our sins. What remained upon his heart and mind was journeying through that cross and that empty tomb and returning to his Father in heaven. And that's where he is now. We confess it week after week. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. This past Thursday was Ascension Day. And on that great and glorious day, while he was surrounded by his disciples, Jesus went out in glory and was raised up into heaven. This was the coronation, the crowning of the Son of God. No longer was he to wear a crown of thorns, but now, now a crown of high esteem would be placed upon his head. His royal robes were once again wrapped around his shoulders, and he sat down on his throne right where he belongs. And from that very throne, he continues to do the unthinkable. He exercises his authority on our behalf. He prays for us. He pleads for us. He petitions for us. Jesus' prayer for us is that we would go out in a blaze of glory, that we would be people concerned about God's glory and not our own, that we would be people of prayer, that we would be people focused on others, that we would share what we have been given to share the love of Jesus Christ, and that one day we would see His glory face to face. Oh yes, at the Father's right hand, Jesus is there interceding on our behalf. And that a father delights in what he has to say because the father always loves to hear what his son says. And all the while, even while he's gone up into heaven, he has not left us. Just as we heard last week, Jesus keeps coming to us. And he's right where he said he would be. He's in his word. He's in his sacraments. He doesn't forsake us, ever. And for those who are struggling and feeling alone and isolated right now, please take that to heart. Jesus, as he went out in glory, does not abandon us. He never will. Jesus said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And he keeps coming to us to shed his light into the dark realities of our lives, to deliver us the peace of his presence and the hope of life everlasting. And that's what we all have to look forward to as we look to his return, where he once went out in glory through the cross and the empty tomb and his ascension. There is a day that we look forward to in joyful anticipation. What a day that will be to look into the clouds to see the Son of God descend. The dead will be raised. and We will always be with our Lord. On that great and glorious day, we will see with our own eyes that that farewell address there in that upper room was no goodbye, but rather it was an until we meet again in glory. And we will meet again face to face. Jesus, our King, who went out in glory, is coming soon. And so we pray, come, Lord Jesus, and come quickly. In Jesus' name, amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard and keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. We join now in our hymn of response, hymn number 525, Crown Him with Many Crowns.
recognizing the great importance of supporting the ministry and workers of our congregation. Offerings can be mailed into our congregational office. Otherwise, it's encouraged to take advantage of online giving. To set this up, please contact Ashley in our congregational office. Please rise for the prayer of the church. Lord, you have promised not to abandon your people, but to be with us always. Grant us grace to hear your word with faith and receive your holy sacrament with repentant hearts and to keep what we hear and receive upon our lips in holy lives. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you are the giver of wisdom and discernment. We pray that as our leaders meet to discuss the decision about reopening the church for face-to-face -face worship, that you would give us wisdom to faithfully serve you. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you have pledged to us your spirit and promise to supply your church with pastors who will preach and teach your word. Bless and protect Pastor May and his family as they serve in your name in Kenya. And comfort Maggie and Tristan May as they are separated from the rest of their family in this pandemic as they are here for school in the United States here in Mayer. Give us ears to hear and hearts to believe your word. Raise up those who will serve your church in generations to come. Namely, do we pray for seminarians Mark Peters and Dale Cranky, that we may never be without the aid of those to serve us in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you have power over all things and appoint an order on earth for the protection of the weak and the punishment of evildoers and the encouragement of virtue. Bless President Trump, Governor Walls, and all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Give them wisdom for the challenges of our times and preserve them from self-serving concerns. Give us grace that we may honor the gift of liberty and be good citizens and neighbors to all. Lord, in your mercy, prayer. Lord, you have compassion upon all who suffer. Give grace to the sick to those with mental illness, to the dying in their last hours, and to those who grieve. Here is especially for those who have been asked, who we have been asked to pray for, for Rachel Guzzi, who is recovering from spinal fusion surgery this past Friday, Ed Dulas, who will be having rotator cuff surgery this coming week. As well, do we pray for Heather Licky, Louis Honabrink, Lennon Ludwig, Norma Domras, Mike Lossing, Tom Libke, Ralph Unglaub, Hazel Deckman. Joan Schwartz, Liz Byersdorf, Bruce Betcher, Myron N. Eldor Schutte, Pastor LaPlante, Lorraine Thamert, Dick and Janice Cron, James Hagen, Lucille Farniak, Edna Ernst, Dolores Hazy, Barb Spletstatzer, Pastor and Jackie Malam, Peggy Euchre, Pastor Hoyer, and those we name in our hearts before you. Grant them patience in their afflictions and deliver them according to your gracious will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you are the source of all wisdom and knowledge. Bless those who teach, those who learn, and especially those who graduate this year. Be the hope of those whose plans have been disappointed and grant that all graduates would find good employment. Guide them in the pursuit of your word and truth to live honorable lives and worthy vocations that in all things you may be glorified. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. Especially do we give you thanks and praise for 45 years of marriage for Chuck and Connie Metzel who celebrate their anniversary here this week. Lord, grant them your love and care and bless them in their love for each other and love for you. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you have given us your own son as our savior and redeemer. He has set his table among us in the presence of our enemies that we might be fed upon the body of Christ and drink his blood. Guard the unity of this table that we would confess him with one voice and receive this blessed sacrament soon and very soon with one faith and hear our prayers for all whom gathering has been made difficult. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you have daily and richly supplied us with all things for this body and life. Guide us, give us grateful hearts that we may receive your gifts with thanksgiving and bring to you our tithes and offerings. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. 
Lord, to whom live all who die in Christ, as tomorrow we mark Memorial Day, receive our thanks for the saints who have loved your appearing and remain faithful unto death. Give to them the crown of everlasting life. We also recall before you those whose service to our nation and to our liberty cost them their very lives. Give us courage so that we may follow where they have led the way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we rejoice in the Savior's promise to guard the people who wear your name by baptism and faith. Until we are with you in your presence forevermore, guard us against the devil who prowls about like a roaring lion, seeking those whom he might devour. Grant us the power to resist him and trust in you without fear. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join together in the prayer that Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is verses 1, 2, 5, 7, and 8 of I Know That My Redeemer Lives, hymn number 461.
Please be seated. Greetings to you in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Got a couple of announcements for you today before closing. The first is, is that the New Germany American Legion will be honoring deceased veterans on Memorial Day at local cemeteries with Honor Guard, Rifle Squad, and TAPS. The plan is to have a minimum number of people performing the brief ceremonies to follow social distancing protocol. We ask any families or friends attending to please stay in their vehicles and practice the present social distancing guidelines. The Memorial Day service at the Carver County Veterans Memorial will be posted on Facebook Live as well. So the Memorial Day schedule will be 9 o'clock at the Crow River Cemetery, 9.30 at St. Mark's in New Germany, 10 o'clock at St. John's in Hollywood, 10.20 at Methodist in Mayer, 10.30 at Zion in Mayer, and then 11 o'clock will be Carver County Veterans Memorial with a program. The second announcement that I have for you is in regard to recent occurrences here that no doubt you've seen on the news. And so much has taken place in recent days here with regard to the reopening of churches, especially with respect to the Roman Catholic Church and the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. Both church bodies have joined in a coalition to begin reopening churches beginning on May the 26th. And so our board of elders and council will be gathering tomorrow evening, Monday evening, to discuss this matter and make a decision with respect to our congregation. We ask that you would all be in prayer for our congregation's leaders as they make this decision. And the plan is that on the day after those meetings or possibly two days after those meetings within that time frame, a letter will be emailed or mailed out to you to inform you what decision was determined and what, if any, future steps will be taking place. So in advance, thank you again for your patience and your prayers. This is a lot, I know, for all of us to try and discern what's going on and everything, but thank you so much for your patience and prayers in the process. There's much to consider as we continue to seek the best way to be able to love and care our congregation, for our congregation, as well as for our community in the name of Jesus Christ. And so with that, I invite you to go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.